a useful idea that shows up in chapter 16 is this thing called the ice box. Now it really has nothing to do with a real ice box. Okay, well the idea here is that it's just an organizational tool and we use it in stoichiometry and also in the equilibrium. Uh, the ice down here at the bottom, you can see if we have a chemical reaction, then we can put a column for each of the chemicals. Okay, and wherever there's a double arrow, I kind of make an extra bold line. And my first row here, this is the initial information. Okay, the very last row, that's the ending information, or we really say the equilibrium values. And then the change we have to go through to get from the initial to the uh, ending, the equilibrium values. An important idea here is that this change row, that is the only row that actually matches the coefficients in our balanced equation. I'd like to look at the example. Okay, so for this example, we started off with the idea that we have a one molar N2O, one molar O2, and no uh, NO to start with. This number quite often is um, sort of implied. You know, if we just say you've got a, a container with N2O and O2, then that implies that the NO value would be zero. And this is after it comes to equilibrium, uh, the value here is 2.0. So, we just kind of go through a simple process and say if I started with 0 and I ended up with 2.0, then I must have made 2.0 molar NO. Now, we said this second row, the middle of the change row, totally matches this 1, I'm sorry, 2 to 1 to 4 ratio. So, we just do some ratio thinking. 4 is to 2 as 2 is to 1. Okay? And 4 is to 1 as 2 is to 0.5. And the idea here, this is plus on this side because we're making that chemical. Okay, so if we're making that chemical, we must be using up this chemical and using up this chemical. So wherever the double arrow is, or wherever the arrow is in a reaction, one side will be positive, the other side for the change will be negative. And changes are the only ones that actually get uh, positives and negatives. So the next one, we just sum it up. So for the oxygen, if we started with 1 and we used up 0.5, we're going to end up with 0 0.5. If we started with 1 and 2 O and we used up 1, then we're going to have 0 of that. So that's my final answer, 0, 0.5, and 2.0. Now what are these numbers? These numbers could be molarities, if we're talking about solution. They could be moles. They could be, um, oh, what's the other one? They could be liters, if we're talking about gases because they at the same temperature and pressure, they'd be proportional. But what it is not, it is not grams. Okay? You can't do this with grams. So here's another problem. So we can see we have 2, 2, and 0. Okay, at the end we have 1, so we must have used up 1. Now I'm going to go through all five of these problems, so you ought to try them yourself, and then come back and look at this. Okay, so if I know one of these numbers in my change row, I know them all. So I have a 2 to 1 to 4 ratio. So 2 is to 4 as 1 is to 2. And we're making that this time. And 2 is to 1 as 1 is to 1 half. So negative 0.5. So 2 minus 0.5, I have 1.5 at equilibrium. 4, no, 0 plus 2, so I have 2 at equilibrium. And those are my three values. Problem 2. Okay, I start with 2, 2, and 0, okay, but I end up here with 1.5, so I must have used up 0.5. Again, 2 to 1, so, so 1 is to 2 as 0.5 is to 1, so this is minus 1. And I can do 2 is to 4 as 1 is to 2, so I must have made 2. Oops. So I have 2.0 for my product and I have 1.0, and those are my answers. For problem three, we have two, two, and one. Now we have a different equation. We have N2 plus 3H2 makes two NH3s. So we start two to five, 1.5, so I must have used up 0.5. And again, one to three to two ratio, so one is to three as 0.5 is to 1.0. Now, when we cross the, the arrow, double arrow here, this side will be positive. So 
So we say 1 is to 2 as 0.5 is to 1.0. And I can see that I did this wrong, so that's a 3. So I'm sorry. So 1 is to 3 as 0.5 is to 1.5. And 1 is to 2 as 0.5 is to 1.0. This side is positive, this side is negative. So if I started with 2 and I use up 1.5, then I must have 0.5 left in the end. And if I started with 0 and I made 1.0, I must have 1.0 again in the end. And again, these could all be molarities. For number 4, I start with the fact that I have 0 ammonia, but I end up with 1, so I must have made 1. Oops, we did it again, 1.0. Now, if I know this one, I, if I know anything in my change row, I can fill it all in. So 2 is to 3, as 1 is to 1.5. And if I'm making this stuff, I must be using up the uh, hydrogen. And 2 is to 1, as 1 is to 0.5. So I'm using that up. So summing it up, 1 minus 0.5, I must end up with 0.5. 2 minus 1.5, I must also have 0.5. And 1.0. Okay, the last problem. This one on my paper is wrong, so I had to go back and fix it so this does not match the paper. But same idea. If I started with 2, 2.5, and I end up with 1.0, then I must have used up 1.5. Now, this is the 1 to 1 to 1 ratio this time. So, this if I used up 1.5 of this, I use my double arrow, I must make 1.5 of my magnesium oxide and make 1.5 of my CO2. So since I started with 0 in both cases, I end up with 1.5. And that's how you do this kind of stuff called the ice box.